Alrighty, welcome back. We just talked about some of the NFL free agency moves and how it affects some of y'all's favorite players going into the draft this year. And now we're going to talk a little bit more about the draft. Uh, There's a little bit of a draft-heavy show, but with all the stuff coming down the barrel about college football, I feel like this is a good time to go up a level and talk about the NFL just for a second. Um, Mel Kuyper most recently released some wide receiver rankings after the combine. Some very interesting things obviously happened at the combine. Xavier Worthy breaking the 40 record, being chief among them. uh, Adonai Mitchell and Brian Thomas had remarkable days. Uh, Roma Dunze is just a beast in every sense of the word. So a lot of really, really interesting guys in this group. But let's jump in and start with his rankings. So He starts with the normal top three guys that everyone seems to have, and Marvin Harrison Jr. at one, Roma Dunsey at two, and Malik Neighbors at three. Uh, He then has Brian Thomas at four, which makes a lot of sense to me, Xavier Worthy at five, Adonai Mitchell at six, Keon Coleman seven, Xavier Leggett at eight, and Malachi Corley at nine, and then finally Ladd McConkey rounding it out at ten. So... A lot of very, very talented guys, a lot of different ways to kind of uh, play around with this, but some changes to this list since the last time that he uh, dropped it, which was uh, Keon Coleman fell from 5 to 7 after the combine, um, mainly because of what the two Texas guys and Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy did at the combine, but um, not a big drop-off for Keon Coleman, but definitely um, a little bit of a drop-off for him. at least in Mel Kuyper's eyes. Uh, Also, Malachi Corley found his way into the top 10. He replaced Troy Franklin, who was at 10 uh, in the previous iteration. So there are a lot of very interesting things. I think one of the things that you might be expecting is Xavier Worthy jumped Adonai Mitchell after the um, draft or after the combine. That was not the case. Uh, Worthy was already above Mitchell before that 40 times, so there's obviously something Mel Kuyper sees in Worthy that he likes more than Adonai Mitchell. But um, uh, let's get into my kind of reactions to this. I think the top three are kind of set in stone. Not necessarily the order of the top three, um, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is number one to me. I, I think you can't leave that type of physical ability on the table, especially at a uh, receiver position. He does so many things incredibly well, but literally no ball is uncatchable, which is a terrifying thought for any corner out there. He is already built to play against NFL corners. There is going to be no learning curve there. He runs routes incredibly well for someone his size. He can do a number of things. His top-end speed is crazy. So basically, he's an athletic freak. And if you have an athletic freak at wide receiver, it's really hard for teams to pass that up. So I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is locked in at number one. Number two and three, I think you can take your pick. I don't think there is a bad way to rank Roma, uh, Roma Dunze and... Malik Neighbors, I think they are both remarkably talented in different ways, but both are just incredible in every way. I would go Roma Dunsey's way. Uh, In my personal opinion, I think he's just a little bit cleaner of a route runner, a little bit more of a complete receiver, but at the end of the day, whoever you get out of these two guys is going to make a massive difference in your team, and Malik Neighbors, if you get the ball in his hands, he can get gone in a hurry, so uh, he's someone that if you were to have him at number two, I would not be at all, um, would not at all turn my nose up at that. Uh, and also, number four, I totally agree with him. Brian Thomas, the size and speed factor uh, combination for that kid is just off the charts. Uh, someone that big, someone that long should not be able to move the way that he's able to move. And it's just remarkable to watch. It's why. Uh, everyone talked about Malik Neighbors, and Brian Thomas was just over here having almost a 20-touchdown season, like just doing crazy stuff at the wide receiver position. So um, to me, Brian Thomas, is, he might be my favorite of the wide receiver group just because of his athletic ability and the things that he can do, and partly because there's so much focus on the top three guys that number four is 
man, just might just be as good as uh, the other three. So it'll be really interesting to see what he can do. He's someone that could go any number of places in the first round, but it feels like more and more a lot of these wide receivers are going to find their way into the first round because, as we know in the draft, there is sometimes this thing that happens where you'll see one guy in one position go, let's say wide receiver, go at number 10, and then another one go at 12, and then another one go at 13, and then teams get nervous, and they start to throw out a lot of the picks that they maybe thought they were waiting till the second round to grab have now become first-round picks because they feel like they won't come back around to them in the second round. So uh, once Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Dunsey, and Malik Neighbors are off the board, a lot of things could happen, and a lot of things could change very quickly. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that unfolds. Um, but after that, I start to disagree just a little bit with Mel. I think uh, one of the big ways that I disagree is I would just flip the two Texas guys. I think Xavier Worthy is remarkable. He's obviously, the speed is just insane. I think there are some worries about his... Um, about drops with him, um, but most of that happened when he had a broken hand towards the end of the 2022 season, so that's not necessarily a worry that I have. Incredible route runner, but the size is somewhat of a concern going into the next level. I, I think even if you know he does play physical, and if you watch the tape, man, does he play physical, and I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. I think when you're in those rooms with the NFL scouts, it's going to be tough to overlook 165 at certain points. So I think Adonai Mitchell, the 50-50 ball ability, the size, the strength, the athletic, the speed, everything, uh, I would I would lean him at the five position over Worthy at the six. But these guys are remarkably close, and both of them are going to make huge differences on whatever team that they're drafted to. Um, At 7, I think I would go Xavier Leggett. Uh, He's someone that is just an athletic beast. He can fly, can line up all over the field. Um, Had a great day at the Pro Day for South Carolina that happened yesterday, um, along with uh, Spencer Rattler, who had a great day, who we talked about earlier. Um, Xavier Leggett is someone that NFL teams are going to absolutely love. Every time you see him work out, it's just remarkable to watch. So I think he's someone that's jumping off the screen more and more as he gets in front of these scouts more and more. And then in the 8 position, I have Lad McConkey. So I jump him from the 10 to the 8 in this uh, iteration of things. And it's really just because he's so complete. He can do really anything you want him to do. He has speed. His route running, in my opinion, <clears throat> is better than anyone in the draft maybe other than Roma Dunsey or Xavier Worthy, but you can make the argument it's better than both those guys. So he's someone that pretty much no matter where you put him, uh, he's going to have success because his ability to get open, his stop and start ability is just insane. Um, He's someone that I love a ton and have loved for a really long time. I've been able to watch him up close being a UGA student for uh, some of the time that he was here, but He's just remarkable. He's someone that uh, works his butt off, does everything the right way, especially being at Georgia and being undersized. It's not going to be easy to get on the field, <clears throat> and he ended up being their biggest wide receiver uh, recruit, and or not recruit, but biggest wide receiver these past couple of years, and their highest rated going into the draft. So he's someone that I would never bet against, and I think he's going to have an immediate impact at the next level. And then the final two guys, I would have Keon Coleman at 9, and then Troy Franklin I would put back in at 10. I think Keon Coleman, athletic beast, can make every contested catch you could possibly want. So any young quarterback that needs a throw it up there and make a let a guy make a play type receiver, this is the guy you want. And then Troy Franklin, just so fast, (laughs) can do a number of different things. I think could be uh, a little bit more of a special teams gadget guy early on, but the sky's the limit for this kid if he's put in the right position. So I really, really like him. And then some honorable mentions because this group is so ridiculous. Uh, Malachi Corley, who Mel Kuyper had in his list, but I would have just off it. Javon Baker from UCF. uh, Jalen Polk, another Washington receiver. And then Roman Wilson, the kid out of uh, Michigan. This wide receiver uh, class is just ridiculous. There's different body types, play styles, different... Um, abilities. There's different dudes, uh, I meant, like mentally different dudes. There are so many incredible talents. 
And obviously, some of these guys will be misses. Some will not live up to the remarkable expectations. But I got to be honest, I think multiple of these guys, at least two, possibly three, and maybe even four, end their career with gold jackets because the talent level at the wide receiver position in this uh, draft is just unlike anything I've ever seen. So if your team needs a wide receiver in this draft, don't you worry about it because there are plenty to choose from. But we're going to take our final break here. And when we come back, we're going to do a Spotlight Wednesday. Today, we're going to talk about the Florida Gators, a very interesting season coming up for Billy Napier and the Gators. So we will break it all down right after this. <laughs> 